the prep for our Angela model is relatively straightforward. I've subassembled the model itself from the base, largely so that I can airbrush underneath, uh, get my brush underneath the model on the smaller painting handle. I find that with this kind of a base size and this big of a painting handle, it's a little tricky to get underneath. Having it separate makes it a lot easier. I can do some airbrushing on the figure itself separately. I can do some airbrushing and paintwork on the base without this entire thing all fiddly and bit just hanging over it. So keep it clean, some assembly. I have this blue tack to a base, although a light touch of super glue will also work just to secure it. And we're gonna paint them both separately and then put them together at the end. I'm not gonna cover how I paint the base. I'll have links below in the video description that'll cover or link to previous tutorials where I walk you through how I painted the bases from a Marvel collection. So if you want to go check those out, the links will be below. I'll show you the uh, airbrush base coating, but beyond that, nothing really. On the Angela figure itself, it goes together fairly cleanly. You just have to watch out for some seams on the torso on either side. So there will be gaps when you put them all together. A little bit of Vallejo plastic putty will just seal it up nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and prime the model with Vallejo Surface Primer Black and then just dive right on in. I'm gonna apply a base coat of AK's Graphite over the base. And then I'm going to use some Vallejo Burnt Umber. And I'm gonna airbrush this onto the Angela model itself. Now I'm just gonna selectively focus this on areas where there's gonna be non metal gold, largely because I'm lazy and don't want a base coat by hand. We're gonna start with the flesh. With some AK Base Flesh, I'm gonna apply a base coat over all of these skin tone areas. You want to make sure that you do a couple of thin passes to get a nice even base coat. From there, I'm going to start mixing in beige red for some progressive highlights. So the goal is to work our way up to pure beige red. Now I'm going to focus this on the brightest parts, leaving some of the deepest shadows, mainly on the undersides of the legs in that base flush. From there, we're going to start mixing in progressive amounts of light flush, and once again, targeting those brightest areas I want the skin to really have this cartoony pop or shine to it. So I'm gonna exaggerate some of the highlights, especially on the legs and on the bosom. Once I'm done my highlighting, I'll go in with some Scarlet Red, thin down, and I'll apply a few glazes with the airbrush. You can do this by hand, but I'm using the airbrush for this step. I apologize for the camera angle. The airbrush does block a lot of the actual spraying shots. So what I'm doing is I'm selectively targeting areas with a nice diluted mix. I'm spraying from underneath where the shadows are, and then where there is any overspray while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna go in with a damp brush, to just sort of wick away any paint or saturation on the highlighted area. So the areas I'm focusing on are where I want that rosy redness, so I'm looking at the thighs, under the armpits, in the breasts, and in the cheekbones. I'll follow this up with some Games Workshop Juicy Violet, doing the exact same thing, targeting some of the deepest shadows, this is about diluted 50-50, so it's not a super intense color. And then with the airbrush at a low PSI, I'm gonna be gently doing very thin progressive glazes. So again, you can do this by hand. I'm just choosing to use the airbrush. From there, we're gonna paint the eyes with a base coat of tenebrous gray. We're gonna paint in the eye socket. Very carefully not to overpaint onto the skin. And then to paint the white of the eye, I'm going to be using Scale Colors White Sands. I'm going to paint a white dot, leaving a black outline. And then I'll go back in with Tenebrous Gray to dot in the pupil. Paint the hair, I'm going to start with a base coat of AK's Reddish Black. And apply a nice even base coat over all of the hair. Make sure that you get to the underside as well. From there, my first highlight step is going to be AK Burnt Red. I'm going to largely ignore the individual folds and just target the big general clumps to highlight the form of the hair. From there, we're going to mix in progressive amounts of that medium rust. And as I highlight up, I'm going to start to focus on clusters of strands. Some of it will be individual, but especially on the side and on the front, it's still targeting some of the larger clumps. And I'll work my way up to pure medium rust. From there, we're going to start working our way up to orange-brown. And from here now is where we really want to target the individual hair strands. So as I progressively highlight up to pure orange-brown, I'm going to focus more on the front of the head, targeting the individual strands and making sure that I get some of those more prominent strands to really pop with a pure orange highlight. 
And you can see here that I'm carefully highlighting some of these more prominent strands using a diluted mix to pull the paint back and fade the highlight. To paint the gold, I'm gonna use some burnt umber and I'm just gonna touch up where we had some overspray from some of our previous glaze steps. So that scarlet red, drinky purple may have nuanced the gold areas. I'm just gonna clean that up with that burnt umber. From there, my first highlight of English uniform from Vallejo. Really, this is gonna be our sort of our mid base tone. So I'm gonna target a lot of the larger flat surfaces, leaving only the deepest shadows and the crevices with our burnt umber base coat. You can see otherwise, I just wanna work up my layers and get a nice even base coat. My next highlight is Japanese uniform World War II. And from there, we're gonna to start to target our highlights. I'm gonna do an edge highlight over all of the edges and then focus some strong highlights where I'm gonna have my brightest pop highlights. You wanna make sure that you're paying attention to where your light source is and you wanna have that contrast for that non model model look between your dark tones and your bright tones. So here, because I have my light source coming from the direction of her head, you can see that on the back side it'll be darker, but I'm still, for that exaggerated effect, applying that edge highlight over all of the edges. From there, I'm gonna start mixing in AK pastel yellow for my highlighting, and we're gonna work our way to pure pastel yellow. At this stage, you wanna make sure that your paints are nice and diluted, so that you can do a lot of thin progressive layers to basically glaze or feather your way up, as well as being able to feather your highlights down. And then with pure pastel yellow, I'm gonna focus on some of the brightest points and edges. With English uniform in the airbrush, I'm gonna go back in and glaze those midtones. And the goal with this is to smooth the transitions and essentially create a nice soft fit. Now I'm using the airbrush for this. You can do this by hand. You get more accuracy doing it by hand, but it's faster and more consistent with the airbrush. Just make sure that your paints are nice and thin and you're doing lots of thin layers. And then we'll apply a final shade with Gucci Violet. And here I'm targeting the deepest shadows with the gold. Once again, a fairly diluted mix of Gucci Violet. So it's a very soft glaze. The goal is nuance. I'm not trying to oversaturate with the violet, just softly shade. I'm going to use AK's Dark Sea Blue to base coat all of the non metal metal silvers. We're looking at the blades as well as the armor elements on her arms and the sword. From there, I'm gonna start mixing in gray-blue from AK into my highlighting. I'm not worried too much at this stage about super smooth highlights, especially on the halberd or the bow. I want to start creating some interesting shapes and patterns, following the curve of the blade, matching my light source, but also trying to get some reflections happening um, into that with the silhouettes. Once I hit pure gray-blue, I'm gonna start mixing in spectrum blue and just doing the exact same thing, continuing to highlight up. I'm not worried about being super neat with my blends. The goal is to create uh, an interesting sort of reflection pattern on the surface of the blade. So I'm following the curves, making sure that I'm getting some nice jumps and contrast from my shadows to my highlights. And then I'll work my way up to pure greenish white. So mixing in gray blue or spectrum blue, progressive amounts of that greenish white. You want to make sure at this stage that your layers are nice and thin, dilute your paints and build up your color. As you get brighter and brighter into the white, you're going to run the risk of chalkiness if you over dilute or under dilute. So we're going to take gray blue and dark sea blue now, and we're going to do our glazing. Because I want to avoid overspraying too much of the blue at this stage, I'm using it by hand and not the airbrush. And we're just going to do lots of very thin progressive layers, depending on how smooth you want your blends to be, you may have to do more or less layers. So for here, on the blade especially, because some of the areas are a little bit rough, I'm doing quite a number of layers. I'm also gonna use the dark sea blue to clean up my edges as I apply my glaze. So I wanna basically sharpen up and really accentuate that contrast between my darkest darks and my brightest brights. That's really what's gonna sell that non muddle model effect. And then finally, I'm gonna go back in with pure greenish white, and I'm going to touch up the highlights on the flat surfaces of the blade. I'm also gonna go over every single edge of the blade and apply a 
So for this, you want to just make sure that the paint's nice and thin. Use the flat side of your brush and just gently drag it along all of the edges. Be as neat as possible, but if your edges aren't super sharp, you can always go back in with your other blue tones and just correct. Finally, I'm going to go back in with pure white and I'm going to apply some final pop highlights over the gold and the silver. So I'm looking at areas where I'm receiving the brightest highlight and at this point I can basically lock in the white as my brightest value. On the corners and edges where I want that extra pop, I'll apply a pure white dot to get that specular highlight going. And you can really see that I'm focusing this on the top of her breastplate, her forehead, as well as the wings on her helmet. Basically the chest, upper shoulders, and the head is where I want the focus of the model and the brightest highlights. To paint the leather, I'm gonna start with a base coat of AK black leather. And you can see here that I haven't done the non metal metal on the belt or the buckle yet. From there, I'm gonna highlight with violet red. And I'm gonna do this in a sort of a scratchy vertical line motion to simulate the way that the leather would bend crack and crease over time. And then for my highlight, I'm mixing pale sand with the violet red. I'm really focusing this highlight on the edges and then creating micro scratches along the surface of the leather. Paint the white tabard, I'm gonna start with a base coat of medium sea gray. Because this isn't a black base coat, it's umber. It'll be a little bit easier, but you'll still wanna keep your paint thin and do a couple of layers to build a nice even base coat, making sure not to overpaint on the edges. My highlight, I'll use AK Pale Blue. I'm not gonna mix, I'm just gonna go straight in. For this, I'm focusing on, on the front part, the top of her tabard. Because of the way that she angles inward, the brightest highlight's gonna be at the top. And then on the back part of the tabard, it'll be on the sides and on the butt. From there, I'm going to mix in progressive amounts of greenish white. Once again, like we're painting the non metal metal blade, you'll want to dilute your paints, get it nice and thin, build up your layers so you avoid any chalkiness, and just work your way up to the pure greenish white. You can see on the back that I'm really focusing on the front edge of the tabard where I'm facing the light source, and then I'll also be highlighting the top of the tabard where it meets the belt above the butt, just as a hint of it. But as I work my way down, I fade the color in so that most of it is that pale blue, medium sea gray, mid and base. With Tenebris Gray, I'm just going to apply a base coat over all of the ribbon. You'll want to make sure that you dilute your paint and get it into all of the crevices, particularly around those X's and O's. From there, I'm going to use Violet Red and Tenebris Gray. And effectively, I'm the wet blend. So the way I'm doing this is I'm applying a coat of the violet red, focusing on parts of the ribbon that face my light source. I want to exaggerate those bright tones and those dark tones. And you can see that once I've got that violet red down, what I do is I just pull the paint into the shadow. And then while the paint's still wet, I'm going in with a tenebrous gray and effectively wet blending in the other direction to create that fade. This part's kind of a little tedious, but I would just say take each ribbon and each facet at a time and just work your way through figuring out which edge is facing the bright and then just blending your way through. From there, I'll take pure violet red and I'll apply my brightest highlights on the surfaces that face the light source. I'm also going to apply an edge highlight over every edge of the ribbon. This is more just for pop and a stylistic choice. From there, I'll mix in pale sand with the violet red to do some edge highlighting on the brightest parts like we did with the leather belt. So the goal here is not to do it all the way around, but to focus on the edges and the corners directly facing the light source. You'll want to match where you have the brightest parts of highlighting on the ribbon, on the flats. And I'm also going to, like with the leather belt, apply some vertical lines, scratches, just to create that texture on the ribbon and give it a little bit more visual interest. If you keep your paints nice and thin, you can actually build up your scratches in layers to create a more uh, varied and, I guess, depth to your texture. And you'll also want to make sure you do this on the larger flat 
surface of the ribbon, where there is the freehand. From there, I'm going to take burnt red and I'm going to apply a base coat over all of the circles, making sure not to overpaint into the crevice. The highlight, I'll go in with carmine. And following the highlighting of the ribbon, we'll highlight the um, X's and O's accordingly. From there, I'm going to go with Fire Flame from Vallejo and Dead Red from AK, and I'm going to continue highlighting the O's. I found that the Dead Red was a little bit too pale, too pastel, but the Fire Flame wasn't bright enough. So I'm going to mix a few highlight passes, 50-50 of the two colors, and then maybe 70% um, Dead Red, 30% of the Fire Flame for my final highlight. And for this, you don't really need to go over all of the O's. You're just focusing on parts of the ribbon that are directly facing the light source in the front of the model where you want a lot of that visual interest. And then as the ribbon curves towards the back side of the model and curves underground or upside down, it stays in shadow. For the X's, I'm going to start with a base coat of number six earth yellow. You're going to want to dilute your paint for this using a fine detail brush. So I'm using a, a size one for this as opposed to a size two which I was painting the rest of the model with. And you're gonna carefully paint in the exit. So you'll wanna do a few passes. Don't try and do it all at once. And if you do make a mistake or you overpaint, I recommend having some of that tenuous gray and that violet red on hand on your palette to clean it up. This is probably the most tedious part of the ribbon. You're just going through all the way and paint. From there, like with the circle, we're gonna use some Sahara yellow and we're gonna highlight the X's along where the ribbons are also receiving a highlight. Like with the circles, we're not highlighting every single X, just the ones on the parts of the ribbon receiving the brightest highlights. As the ribbons curve to the back and upside down, it receives no highlights. Finally, I'm going to go in with some Gucci Violet here, and we're going to do a final glaze. I'm targeting the ribbons mainly with this glaze. It's going to have low impact on the actual tenebrous gray violet red part. What I really want to do is shade those X's and O's, especially in those shadows. Um, where the Gucci Violet is applied, it'll have a nice purple blue tone. It deepens the colors all over, and it just creates that final depth where we didn't want to have to do the shading by And then to finish off the model, I'm going to apply some weathering powders to the base. This is a 50-50 mix of Vallejo's Dark Yellow Ochre and Burnt Umber. I use this over all of my Marvel models just to help unify the collection. I'm going to focus this on the crevices, mainly where the sidewalk meets the pavement. And then I'm going to just do a light dusting over select parts of the base. Add a bit of that sort of ready yellow tone but without taking away too much of that khaki or that terracotta tone from this. Once I'm happy with the final result, I'm going to take some mineral spirits and I'm going to saturate the base. This will help to fix the powders and basically provide a protection. It'll take about 45 minutes to an hour to fully evaporate. Once it does, I'll paint the base trim black. I'll apply a matte varnish. So I'm using Mr. Hobby's Super Clear. This is a gaming piece, so I want to make sure that I am protecting the model from handling. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.